Okay, so my topic is why React? Why, why should you go into React? Now, if you remember, for those of us that were in CodeCamp 2.0, we said uh, the basics of building websites, the, basic, the basics of front-end development is more like you have HTML, you have CSS, you have JavaScript. Now, I'll, I'll still go over my illustration then. Now, when you want, when you actually want to build out a web page, you get the design, you lay the foundation with HTML, you beautify it with CSS, and then you add powers to it with JavaScript. Basic, basic everything. Now, the problem with just using the basic is that there are things that you want you want to change. Say for instance, now when you're creating with HTML and CSS, now you have this file named index.html. And then when you host it on GitHub page and you want to maybe route to that particular page, you have index.html at the end. Now, another thing is how scalable is this? How scalable is what you're doing? How scalable is using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? Is it, will it, uh, can someone pick it up and improve on it? Okay. It's, sorry, I thought I was doing that. Okay, sorry. I thought I was sharing my screen. Okay. So, so you ask yourself, is it scalable? Then why are you going, why, why are you picking React? Okay, why are you picking React? So React was like, is an upgrade from HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. After developers looked and then they saw that, man, just using the basic is not enough. We need a better way of routing. We need a better way of uh, managing the DOM. We need a better way of um, complementizing things. Because believe me, when if you want to build a page with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, your code has to now be very, it has to be long. Your landing page, you can start from the beginning till the end on that same page, and it's so long. So they thought about ways of making it easier, easier for you to even debug, easier for you to even build out. So if there's a problem in a particular spot, you're able to know where the problem is. So let's go into React. Why React? Framework. React is the library. Now, why you in particular, why did you choose to go for React? So if you can give me the answer in the chat, yeah. Why did you choose React? Why? Uh, is, it, is it just, is it because CodeCamp said, yeah, do React? Why did you choose React? You can reply in the chat, thank you. While that is happening, uh, let me just. Okay, because it's popular. Okay, very, very interesting answers. So it makes it easier. Great, yeah. So let's, let's see, let's see from my own point of view. So why React? So React is a popular JavaScript library, which you use building user interface. So what you've been doing with your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you can easily do it with React and even do it better. Now, this was developed by Facebook. So Facebook sat down, they looked at a way of improving it, and then they came up with React. 
They use it to create dynamic and interactive web. But why? Why? Why are you going for React? I know it's popular. Yes. Vue is also popular. But why choose React? I think that React is doing something that Vue is not doing. So these are these are JavaScript frameworks that kind of improve how you do stuff. So some reasons why React is a good choice or a popular choice is because one, it has component-based architecture. It has component-based architecture. You also have the virtual DOM. You have reusable uh, components. You have unidirectional data flow. There's JSX, and they have a very large ecosystem. Now, if you go on, if you go on, uh, if you go on LinkedIn, if you go on if most job business that you find, oh, it's React, React, React everywhere. So people are into React. So you can be all, you can be right to say it's popular. Yeah. You want to land your your a gig and all of that, so you have to learn React. So that is all good and fine. So let's talk about these things. These are the benefits. So the first one is, yeah, the component-based architecture. So for component-based architecture, React follows this approach where you kind of break your user interface into smaller bits. So small bits that are reusable. When you, when you think of components, think of them as small reusable components, like small reusable entities. So say for instance, now uh, I have a nav bar. You're using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I have a nav bar. Now this nav bar, I want to have it on like 10 pages. I have to copy the nav bar to each page to each page. And this is, there is something about code. Don't repeat yourself, the ROI. You keep repeating the same thing. So what happens when you make a mistake and you change something on one part of the code and then you forget it in the other side? What happens? Your code breaks and then you wonder, ah, why is it not working? But with components, components, with React now, I can create a Nava, and everybody, anybody that uses it has the same thing across board. So if I change something here, across, same thing. If I make a change on one part, I, I, it, it affects the other part. So components are actually meant to be reusable. They are self-contained, that means more like the logic for that component, you put it also inside there. So it's not like having a full one very long uh, JavaScript uh, uh, file. Yes, okay. So on this page, I want to fetch countries. I fetch the countries. On another page, I'm supposed to show the detail page. You also did on the same this thing. It's actually not. It's actually not that way. So with React, it makes it better for you. So components can be composed together to create complex UIs, making code modular, maintainable, and easy to understand. So when you have an issue with a particular code, when you have an issue, if you have an issue with a particular code, you're able to uh, correct that part and not break other things. So when you have a long, we have a very long file, you can change something and forget, oh, I forgot to change it in this part. Like for most of us that way, you keep re-rendering re the app. Let's say for instance, after you fetch now, you want to filter. So after filtering now, you now have to re-render again. And then you make a change here, you didn't make, you didn't change it here. So that is a problem. That is a problem. So component-based uh, architecture. Then, Secondly, uh, React also utilizes a virtual DOM. Now, I think one of the responses, I think when, when we gave it the task, we were like, let's do it with, with React, maybe because you already know a bit of React. And I know most of us are not entirely beginners. You probably, 
uh, picked up a tutorial or something, or you've attempted something with React. Now, when you're using them, um, when you're using HTML, CSS, when you're doing JavaScript with it, you're actually manipulating the raw DOM. That's the bare DOM. So when you use React, React kind of creates a layer for you. So when you want to make a change, it does not affect like everything on the page. It does not affect, it just affects that particular place that you want to change. So React compares the virtual DOM with the real DOM and only updates the necessary components. So this Im improves performance. So it's not like the whole page has to re-render before you're able to get the new content. It's only that spot that needs to be changed that just changes. And then it helps so that you're able to create it, you're able to um, render your page faster. So that is that's the second reason why people go for, why it's popular, why people use it. Now the third one is still reusable components. Like I explained earlier. So if you create a component here, let's say you create a card. Let's say you're supposed to display testimonials. Instead of you creating like multiple testimonials, just create a single card and then pass the, the data that you want to use inside it. Chicken, huh? that's all. Everything flows as it's supposed to be. The only thing created is, yeah, you understand that this is a component. So I just need to pass. So for this data, I have, I'm just, I'm just passing the data with the data inside it and it just displays it as I want it to be. So multiple developers can just pick it up and use it in their code and they don't have to. Now, one mistake that I think I noticed that, yeah, while teaching people is that, let's say for instance, you tell people to work on a project, different people. Now somebody sees that, oh, there's a Navbar. There's a Navbar on this page. Now, instead of, probably because, probably because, um, yeah, probably because uh, you don't know how to work as a team or something. Now you see somebody creating the same Navbar for his own page. Instead of like separating it, you create this one, you like, you're supposed to have one person create that Navbar and everybody uses it across, even if you're using vanilla HTML. So one person creates it and then everybody re reuses it. Now think about, we have different ways of thinking. I can decide to use Flex. And then you decide to use Grid to create your Navbar. And then you now see that we have different types of codes. We have, <laughs> we have different versions of the Navbar because we think differently. But now if you're using reusable components, you just create it once. Someone else picks it up, puts it in the code, and then it runs. Everybody can use it. Everybody can use it and not recreating everything. So that's another uh, importance of it. So another thing is we talk about um, unidirectional flows. Now, when you're using React, now React, there's what we call props. So props is like you're sending data from one component to the other. So when you're using components, what you're basically passing into those components is just data. Let's say, for instance, uh, look at that digital page that you wanted to do. All you need, well, basically, what you, what you might do if you're using React is you have a card or something, and you want to display that page. You just need to pass the object gotten from when you click a particular card, you just pass the object into that new page or that new component and automatically it shows up. So React has this uh, one direction data flow. So it's, a, it's, it's also called the one-way data binding. So 
the data flows from the parent to the child. The data flows from the parent to the child. Now, if you're using things like, uh, I think if you use view, just bringing it in. Now, view has a way of you also pushing it back from the child to the parent, that kind of stuff. But in React, it's more like you come from the top and then go down. So what this unidirectional flow does is that um, it simplifies debugging for you. So you will more like, you know where the problem is. Oh, I probably did not pass this thing well from the parents to this. But when you have to now also inject it from the child up, it could, all, it could be a problem. So, so that's like something to consider. So from the parents, parents is like a bigger component that contains smaller chunks of components inside it. So let's say, for instance, if you're looking at my screen now, let's say we have, uh, so we have this text on this side, and then we have this image on this other side. Now, I can decide now, this, the whole of this screen is my parent component. Now, inside here, where I have the text, these are, this is, you know, you notice that they all look alike. You have this title, it is bold. You have the colon, you now have the text. Same thing for this place, this. Now I can decide that instead of me displaying it, instead of me repeating and repeating this thing now, I just create a component. This is this like one component. So you understand that if I'm passing props now, if I'm passing the data inside it, so I need something that will tell me that, oh, this is the, this is like maybe the heading and then this is the content. And then I repeat, I just, I just kind of map it or yeah, look through it to get, just passing the data and array that, ha that contains this. So it now displays all these things here. Yeah. So the point I'm trying to make now is this screen is a lump, is a parent component. Now it now contains smaller components like having this. Then you can also have a component for this image. You can have a component for this logo here. So if you want to pass props, you're now passing it from the parent down to the smaller components. I, I hope we understand. Do we have questions so far? Yeah, you can raise your hand or you can drop it in the chat. Okay, okay, okay. So I take it that we we understand what I've been saying so far. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so that's fine. Now, the next thing that we we'll the next reason why it's popular is because React uses JSX. Now, JSX is JavaScript XML. So it's an extension that allows developers to write HTML code within JavaScript. So, well, we, with time, we'll, we'll get to see what this is like when we get to set up everything. So it's more like, you're able to write JavaScript code inside your HTML. Mm. So it, it, things like calculation, things like um, uh, even displaying data, you can use you can use JavaScript to do that. Like you have a state, you have a state, and then you now want to, based on that state, you want to display a particular. Uh, maybe a particular portion or uh, a particular section. So you can write, you can use JavaScript within that this thing, just because you're using JSX. So JSX kind of provides a concise and intuitive syntax for defining component structure. So it also makes rendering uh, easy. And then you can also understand the UI hi hierarchy. So it kind of allows 
helps you to understand how your pitch is. So there are people that use JS. So you have like, if you're creating a page, let's say sign up the JS. Some people sign up the JSX. I prefer to use sign up the JSX because, because of this, uh, the, the goodie that it has allowing you to write HTML. You can do the other one. You can also use it. You can also use, uh, you can also write your JavaScript inside a .js file this thing. So this is more like, it's more like an extension. So, so you have the page name .jsx. So we'll get to understand it over time. Then aside that, we also have a very, a large ecosystem. So we have a large ecosystem. Uh, now, one of the problem that people have, and let's say generally in programming is, let's say you have an issue, you have a problem, you're trying to solve something, then you jump on the internet and then it's hard for you to find resources. It's hard, I know, I know of a time I was creating a page with view and I needed a slider that will work on it. God, I looked, I looked and looked, ah, and I could not find. <laughs> I want no evidence. Okay, so I actually looked. I looked for this thing, but I could not find it. Reason being that, well, probably you don't have people that have created uh, sliders for that particular, that work with it. And even when I saw something, I was trying to tweak it so that, yeah, it works properly with it. But it's a problem. So React has like a very vast ecosystem where you have libraries, you have tools, you have community supports. So there's almost nothing that you will try. And yeah, maybe somebody has not done it before or somebody has not tried it before. So it kind of helps you. It helps you. Um, to get resources, it helps you to um, find out answers when you're stuck. So, because Facebook has this, and then there's a community. So, resources, tutorial support, you can easily get all of this. So, this makes it uh, makes the developers find solutions. Your productivity is enhanced. You can build very robust applications using it. So that is a, I think that is like, yeah, that is, that is, those are the reasons why you could go with React. Those are the reasons why React is popular. So something that you should have in mind is that when we are building here, when we are building with React now, you're not going to add a lump of code. You're not going to write a very long code. You have to learn how to componentize it. Things that you need to reuse, know how to use it. Things that you need, need to, I have somebody that kind of gives, maybe it says your code not more than 300 lines or something of that sort. If it's more than that, you now, have to, you now think of it, you now think of ways to break it down. Either you make components out of it, but that is the way React works. So you have to open up your mind that that is the way that things are going to be. So your routing method is going to change and a whole lot of things. And please, and please, and please, you know that your, your basic um, design, the way you build out your designs, you need to improve on it because you're taking a step up. This React is not, it's not like, you're just you're doing um is an upgrade from your basic HTML. So you it's so it's believed that yeah, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, at least you have fair knowledge. You you can build uh better interfaces than what you used to do before. So that's the assumption that I'm, that is what I'm working on. And that based on what you submitted, that's what we are going to work with. So yeah. Here, yeah, we, are, we are going to improve on what we already know. So that's, it's just an improvement on what you already know. It's not like it's something 
out of space. It's something that you already know. It's still HTML, CSS, JavaScript, JavaScript, just probably in a more early manner. You're learning a few things to add to it. So just gear up and be ready. Ready. So then another something else that is very important. Yeah, is you need you need to know that you need to understand JavaScript. That's why we are just going to run through JavaScript just to refresh our minds. We are just going to run through JavaScript to refresh our minds. So now um I don't know if anybody has questions so far. They have been talking and talking. I know that this first class is just, well, it's an intro. We are not getting our hands very dirty yet. So do we have questions? But eventually your hands will get dirty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you're wearing white, your white is dead too. Okay, so, okay, yeah. All right, so let's go over JavaScript. So we're going to just touch, okay. Yeah, Emmanuel. Okay, so um, I wanted to find out if, you, when you were talking about props, is it like we can pass anything? Like, is it just components? Because I think you said we can pass components as props. Is it just components or we can pass anything like, functions variables okay okay yeah so what you're doing is you're passing data props is just it could be an object that you're passing inside it could be a string that you're passing inside so it's just basic it's data that you're passing into smaller components so you're passing those things inside components not like you're passing components you're passing data into those components I don't know if you're clear on that. Thank you. Yes, I'm clear. Thank you, sir. Okay. So let's say, for instance, uh, I'm just going to use this now. So let's say, for instance, now, I want to pass this as crop. Now, I'll probably... Okay. okay. Yeah, I'll probably create... Um, I'll probably create either a state, yeah? So it states for this, uh, the title here, yeah. and also create maybe a state for this. Alternatively, I can pass an object having maybe, let's say I can call this heading and then maybe this, the body, and then I pass it as an object. So object key value pairs, so heading and body. So I now come inside, I probably destructure it and then I use it inside the components where I want to use it. So more like when this is displayed now, you kind of define that, okay, for this section, what is going to show up is the heading. For this other section, what is going to show up is the body. And then you map through it, you look through it, and then you get your, uh, you get what, you get this, what it looks like, you get the interface. So if, if you're new to it, if you're entirely new to it, we're actually going to touch it. We have to we'll do it. We we'll have to we we'll, we'll pass props. We we'll do a whole lot of yeah, working with props. Though at some point, yeah, yeah. props using props, mm, it's not when your project gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. You have to think of better ways of handling it. You won't use yeah, you will use props at some point. That is that the right thing to say. Not that you won't use props. You have to think of a better way of you will not do prop drilling. Now there's something called prop drilling. Prop prop drilling is like you're passing props maybe from one child to the other child, and then it's not it's not like it's a rabbit hole. So you more like have to think of a way of putting it in a global scope. Let's say for instance, you do authentication now. And then you want to log in. Now, logged in. You now have to now pass it from the first child in the next. You now have to 
uh, the data kind of keeping it on the global level. An example of that is that your whole addition of items is different from the components where you're adding, uh, is different from where the notification is supposed to show. How do you make it, make the increments there? How do you show that there's an increase in the items in your cart? So you now have to think of a way of putting it on a global scope. I don't know if we get, get what I'm, I'm saying. Do you understand? Okay. 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 Please, if you if you understand, if you get what I'm saying, you can just yeah say something in the chat or something. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. So let's just go into let's just touch. Yeah, let's touch JavaScript now. So most of us, we are saying, I, I asked us to rate ourselves, how good is our JavaScript? Some of us, we are saying so on and so forth, so on and so forth. <laughs> it's all good. OK, so we are just going to do a refresher. And uh, yeah. OK. So I'm just going to open VS Code. I believe you guys can still see my screen. I am just going to create a new file and I'll just call it app.js. All right. Okay, so now, well, we already know, we already know, um, well, you've been working with variables. There are different ways of uh, there are different ways of creating variables. Well, formerly we used to use var name is equal to, okay. I don't know if I need to do this. All right. So there are some people that still use this. I don't know, this is 2023. Please use a let or something. So, there are some people that still use this. It's better still. I would prefer using a let. If you're going to change it, if you're going to change that information, better use, better to use a let. So this kind of scopes things for you. Let's say, for instance, you have like, I don't know if anybody, does anybody understand? Okay. What's the difference between a global scope and a functional scope. Can somebody explain that? Okay, okay, Mana. Okay, so a global scope um, is mostly when we use, a global scope basically is a variable that you can, can be accessed in anywhere in, in our code. Like if you have a function, you can access the variable. The variable is usually written outside. So you can okay. access the variable anywhere in your function, in your block of code. It, it can be accessed in the window object. Basically, that's what the global scope means. Okay. While a function scope is, function scope is just the one that you can access within a function. So if you have a function and then you assign a value to a variable, that variable can only be accessed within that function. It can be accessed outside the function. Okay, very fine. That's what's, that's just it. So when we talk about function scope, the way I, the, I don't know if people from CodeCam 2.0 can remember how I explained it to them. So I said, it's more like, I don't know if anybody wants to give it a shot, any old, any person from there. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's say maybe they've forgotten. Okay, so the way I put it was that, let's say you have you have a compound. Now inside that compound, you have an orange tree. You have an orange tree in that compound. Now that compound is more like a function scope. Yeah, that that's that's 
that compound is more like a function. Now that orange tree is your function. Yes, within the any any tree within that compound that is like is within the function scope. Now let's say for instance, there's another. You go outside the compound and then you're seeing another tree outside there. Everybody, everybody has access to it. If you pluck oranges from that tree, nobody's actually supposed to come and start questioning you, except those people that have bad belly. So just understand it that way. An orange that is inside your compound is only accessible to you and not accessible to people outside, except your own is growing across the fence. But if, so far as it's within your compound, yeah, it's just meant for just you. But then when it's outside, that is a global scope. Everybody has access to it. So the same thing works for your, for your variables. So you have those ones that are on the global level and those ones that are just within the function. All right, so when you have let's, yeah, let's, I still use my name because I like my name. Okay, so when you have, yeah, let's name. So you use this when you want to make a change. When, when you easily want to, when you, when you know you're going to change this information. But then we also have const when you don't want to, well, and normally, well, the way JavaScript taught us, like you're supposed to use a, you're supposed to use capital letters for your constant. Yeah. How many people still keep to that? So let's say pi, we can have 3.142 if I went to school well. Okay. So this is a constant. You cannot update this information. If you try to update this thing now, you have an error. You have you have issues, so so it's more like when you use let you can update it. You can change. You can say name is equal to so all these things. I believe we already know name is equal to. So let me try something here. Uh, yeah, another thing I need us. I need also have heads up for is that we'll be using the terminal. So for those of us that you've been watching the matrix <laughs> and all of that, this is when you now start to become a developer. Okay. So let's see how, let's see if I want to do console, console.log name and spell name. All right, so let me try this out. So I am in this folder, code camp, and I will just do node app the yes. Okay. How many of us can still see my, can you see my screen? And yes, okay. you can see screen. Okay, okay. Does anybody have questions about what I just did? Or how many of us have tried this before? If you've tried it before, just raise, up, raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 okay. So Austin, okay. And let me believe that people that are raising their hands up now are people that have tried it before. You've tried this. Okay. Okay, you can drop your hands. If you have questions concerning this, raise your hand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Austin, do you have a question or? Okay. Yeah, so Edwin. That's your question. Okay. okay. People, ask your question. Okay, so um my my question is 
this terminal that um, that's showing here, right, is okay, it's supposed to be the one that we go to our Chrome and check through the console. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's that is um so me, okay. So what happens is, yeah, what, what we normally do is that you kind of link it, link your page to a HTML. Mm -hmm. And then you try to output what you're seeing in the console that is there. But instead of using that console, you can actually use your console here. When you're dealing with just pure JavaScript anyway, you can just use your console here and just run it and get that answer. I get what you're looking for. Okay, can I go through it again? <laughs> okay, so if I, in, that means if we are using um, HTML and CSS, right? Um, yeah. We can't use this terminal yet, right? We have to use the <laughs> console on the on the browser. Yes, if it is linked up, if it's linked up to your, if you can just run a particular file, you can run a particular file. So far as that is app.js you can run okay 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 so okay I'm, 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 yeah i'll come i'll come to that austin so the thing is when you're using this when you're using if you're you can run your javascript files but you need something to run it you actually need to install do um node rather you, you need to install node on your laptop to be able to run this so what this does is it picks up that file and then runs the logic and outputs it so if you have a console if you have a computation or anything it shows it in the console it's the same thing that happens when you're using uh, your html and your javascript what you see on the console you know, like you need to link it up then so even if i have like nested i have my index of html and all of that and i still want to just run this app.js alone i can just come and just so far as you've installed so far as you've installed node in your in your pc you should you'll be able to just note and the name of the app so let me see let me try this again node and app so you don't even need the extension, sir. You just need the file name. You just need the file name. And then what happens? I don't know if Ugochuku, are you are you clear on that? Or do I still need to go through it again? Okay, let me change this thing. So let's say book. Okay, and I want to change this. Okay. So yeah, Austin, back to your, your own question. Now the problem, I think uh, there are some, re I call it reserved names. There are some distance like that, that you don't, you're not supposed to use like that. Name is more like, it's very generic. So it's more like you need to use specific kind of names, not name is just so that's why when VS Code, my own, I don't know for other people's VS Code, there are some names that I well, variable names I use, and then it's like, oh man, this name, why are you using this sort of so you kind of have to think of better ways of naming this thing. And trust me, naming is something else. If you if if you've actually tried naming variables naming is something else so it's not it's not an extension thing it's just if you check let me just go back to what it was so if i hover on this now it tells you it's deprecated so whatever that means but if i use something different control y if i use book like this so I still run my app. I just need to do clear. I don't know how many of us have even set up our this thing properly. So um, well, there are a couple of setups. So 
or if you're using if you if if you're using Git here, even though it's a video of setup, if you're using Git, you're supposed to like if if you can use if you can link up your is a default profile, select default profile here. So there's like git bash here. If you select it, you should have your terminal should start looking like this way. So it allows you to you can do you can use your git uh, more like Linux command other things inside here. So that's why if I type something here, let's say let me just and then I want to do clear. It clears it for me. Yeah, the default is PowerShell, so you can actually change it. Yeah, so when you click on it, you go to uh, select default profile, and then you select git bash, and then put it as default. So that will make it to look like this. So there are a couple of things that you can easily do here. So because we'll be using terminal a whole lot, a whole lot for React. Your terminal has to be running. Well, it has to be running. Um, so let's let's just continue. I think I've talked about let's, I've talked about cons. So these are just these are these are these are variables, and over time we'll get to use them well in a better way. So the next thing to look at is let me just go. Yeah, data types. So we have like different data types. We have different data types. Uh, we have strings. We have, so it's actually official. Uh, JavaScript has like eight. And then I came across, we have object data types. So those ones are like your objects, your arrays, even your dates. So those are those are like improve this thing, but more like primitive data types. You have like strings. You have like let me just put this in the comments. So you have strings, you have booleans, you have uh Okay. Okay. <laughs> Why are they running out of my head now? Okay. You guys should help my life. Well, numbers. Okay, numbers. Just do it in the chat. Numbers. Yeah. Good. So let's see. Eh, objects. Okay. So we have array, we have undefined, we have, which one again? <laughs> ah, not a number, no, okay. Yeah. Okay, so interesting and interesting, we can go on and on. And on. Okay, so no, yeah, we have no, we have symbol, we have big int. Okay, so yeah, so I believe I'm not really going to go in depth into all these things. So yeah, so let someone just help us out. What is what do you understand by a string? Just a refresher. You can raise up your hand or. What's a string? Yeah, it's a sequence of characters. Okay, that's nice. So it's more like, it's a train of characters, sequence of characters. So characters are like your alphabets or your numbers. So all of this come up to, when you merge them together, something like I am, um, a boy, yeah. So that's the string. Yeah, yeah. So, so let me just say, let's sentence. 
Now, yeah. So you can either be single or double quotes, whatever the case is, whatever you choose. Then you also know that, let's say for instance, if you have something like, uh, I am a boy, okay, and my spelling is so wonderful. Okay. So I can also, I can update this. As a sentence is equal to, can I do this? A boy's shoe is bad. So, why is my code like this? Yeah, yeah. So why is my code like this? Can someone say? I know this is a bear. <laughs> so I have to use a back tick. Well, that's it. That is, yeah. So, so for this case now, you have a single quote in the midst of single quotes. So what it does is it's just going to pick this and stop at the quote. And then it now forgets that these are these other things are here. So a way of escaping this, well, your back ticks can work. You can decide to use double quotes here. And then the single quotes is inside. Alternatively, you can just use your back tick. Yeah. And it never remembers that there was a problem like that. So you can either, you can even have, I think you can have your whole double quotes inside here. It does not send you, nobody sends you. Yeah, yes, yes, that's the two. All right, so now, so this is this is more like, yeah, a way of, you can use, you can either use your back ticks, you can uh, use your single quotes, or you can use double quotes. Now, when you have to play around with, single quotes in between you can just use your back to, saves you from a whole lot of stress but if you're going to use single quotes now can somebody explain concatenation for me concatenation yeah yeah in your own words and raise your hand i like i like people also speaking up raise your hand what do you understand by concatenation? People of God. Okay, <laughs> Emmanuel. Yeah. Okay, from my own, um, what I understand, concatenation is basically like the um, addition of strings. Like, Okay. If, you, if you are trying to join one string, one set of, one sequence of characters, with another sequence of characters, then you basically concatenate by using the plus operator. Okay. 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 Yeah. String concatenation. We have, yes. So it's more like you're merging something with another one. You're combining stuff. You're combining strings. So the boy's shoe is bad. I have another sentence. Let's you so just refresh us obla boy she is bad say but Oma. i know english well obla Okay, so I have these two sentences now, and I want a full sentence. So let's full sentence. Also, so I want to concatenate these two sentences. How do I do that? Okay, people. 
Okay, to add the two sentences together, you are going mm -hmm. to use the the plus the plus sign. Uh, if mm -hmm. I'm right, yes. <laughs> you use <laughs> you on. use it now. You use the um the plus sign. That is, um, full sentence equals to a sentence plus the um. The verb that is, if you want it to be sentence, it's going to be full sentence equals to sentence plus new sentence. Okay. Then okay. the the this thing and run it. Yes. Then con console dot log full <laughs> sentence. All right. All right. So okay. <laughs> so these are just basic stuff. So I'm just going to run my app and. Now, okay, so we now have this. Yeah, we now have something like this now. So most times, thing with concatenation is you have a sentence like, like this, and then maybe you forget to give spaces. Just look at this now. And I'm not even supposed to have this full stop. Oh, I'm supposed, okay. You're going sentence wise so you have this and then you forgot to give a space after it and then you're trying to do the whole concatenation so now it's not like i'm saying that backticks are, pre are more preferred or something but if you're using backticks you you just do it once and then it saves you the whole stress but when you now have to do this and then you now have to do a plus and so if you don't check it properly. You can have you can have an instance like this. Now I'm supposed to have a space here, and that would have worked either by giving a space after this. So if I run this again, yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. So that's if I run this again now. Okay, I didn't save this. So, and like for most of us, I used to leave our this in a, on auto save. I don't leave mine on auto save because you're working on like heavy apps, and then it's when you're working with React. Now React does this automatic rendering, so you save you immediately use. So as you're saving something, it's automatically uh, updating, automatically updating. Then it's dragging your system and all of that. So if you don't have a very good system, well, think about think about your life. Okay, so let me run this again. <laughs> so this is much better. This is much better. Now. What's the what's the different way of doing this? If we want to do it, do I do something like that? Okay, so I want to join these three sentences. I want to join these two sentences. I want to join them. It's very funny and it's looking funny already. So I want to join them and add something else. Let's say, can he wait? I'm just playing around with what I don't even know. So I want to add this sentence, this one, and then this. This is another sentence on the screen. But I just want to add it on a single line. Now I can just use the whole back tick. So because this is a variable, and I now have to do something of this sort, right? I can also do like this because these are variables. So what about this last one? So what would my output be? Let me see. So 
when you're using backticks, it's kind of easier. It's just easy for you to add up stuff and just go straight up and use it. So this is just this is just me playing around with sentences. This is just me playing around with strings. So you can do a whole lot. Strings have like a whole lot of functions. So you can just go up and refresh your well. Your, you can re refresh your mind. I don't know, I'll be your brain for yeah string methods. So let's go to booleans. What are booleans? What are booleans? So booleans are like yeah, basically true or false, right? Right. Yeah. So booleans are true or false. True or false. They're just your states. So I uh John is a boy. Is that true? Mm -hmm. So it's more like uh let's see. So let's just talk about booleans. So five greater than. Let me just console log this CL. Okay. I will need this. Let me just do this. So what do we think that this two give us? Or will my answer be here? Yeah, to give us a boolean, boolean of false. So let me just save this. Run again. So need to clear this here. So, so I have speeds a boolean of false. So if I do, if I do type of. And I wrap this inside. Okay. So what would this give us? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it gives you a boolean so type of is when you want to know the <laughs> type of type of when you use type of you're trying to know what type what data type it is so that's what type of does it doesn't give you a number favor so yeah yeah so that's that's that so you use this when you're working with if statements what you need is you just need so you say if something, so if a condition is true, then you run that particular code. You're playing with Boolean when you're doing this. When you're using ternary operators, you're also playing with Boolean because if the first condition is met, you do the first thing. So that's what happens, right? So that is Boolean. Then numbers, yeah, we we'll, we'll play numbers. So let's say, for instance, we have we have them. Um, we have um, what do they call them? We have two major types of numbers. We have um, what do they call them? Yeah, we have floats. Then we have in well, we have in. Okay. Yeah, we have integers. Yeah, we have integers. We have we also have floating those ones that yeah, you have a decimal point after it. So those are just numbers. Those are numbers. So numbers. I don't do I need to do that. Let's cost equals to five hundred. 
these are just numbers you just call them that way and you can play around with it because there are different there are many number times uh, number types rather so these are just you can just use numbers this way um so the next one is objects objects so objects so objects what are objects or well, key value pairs so let's let a um, person equals to name i don't know why i like name <laughs> Uh, let me just use it anyway. So name. Uh, age. I don't know how many. Uh, how old am I, self? <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> all right all right all right so i'll just put that in the, in the meantime all right uh well again states i'm from emo so these are just yeah status I don't know the answer for this, but so this is this is more like an object. So an object kind of defines a particular entity. So think of it more like <laughs> okay. Think of it more like let's say you're trying to define a particular person. So these are this is my name, this is my age, all this kind of define me as a person. Ah, that one drew people's attention. So just think of it like, yeah, in that regard. So um then uh an array. So let's I I normally for me, how will you define an how will you define an array? How will you define an array? For me, me well, let me let me get your get your, get your definition. So what for you? What's an array? So it's a list. A list of objects, class of objects. <laughs> okay. In layman terms, what we use an array is. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So if I were in primary five, you have to explain that to me. You be you say it's objects together, objects with values. <laughs> you sure it's not this engagement, this and that is making some people give some answers. <laughs> okay, then. so to me, I feel array is is a is a uh, the collection of elements that stores um this thing that stores data. This is store um. The data structure used to store collection of elements like numbers, strings, and objects inside. So an object that represents a collection of similar types of properties yeah. or elements. Hmm. Can it will it be? Can it be similar types? You know, you can have, yeah, you you, you arrange the data in a list. Yes. So well. Most of what you guys are saying is 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 the right is right. I think Austin's own what what was Austin's own? I think that's the collection of variables. Okay, so the way I normally explain my own is more like it's 
a, a, a garage or where you have different, you can have different cars inside it. It's more like a garage. You can have objects inside it. You can have strings inside it. You can have, what else? even boolean so you can have different things it might not necessarily mean that they are the same so i can have just think of it like let's say cars now after all i have toyota i have uh what do they call it all this olden this car volvo I have BMW. I have, I have four. So more like you have, you can have different things. You can also have, you can have, so this is more like, this is when you're keeping it to similar kind of items. I can, I can have, oh, I, I come here now and I have person inside here and I have, more like something of this sort inside here. So if I console log, if I do CLG and then I do cars, save this. Yeah. So <laughs> there is nothing that will not see you. Jesus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've given I've given people something to think about. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So in essence, what I'm trying to say is what I'm trying to say is you can have different things inside here. Let's say I want to get the last. I want to get the last item inside this my array. What, what am I going to do? I want to get the last item. Or, yeah, I want to get the last item. Our JavaScript gurus, people were grading yourself for saying that you're this thing and this thing. Come and teach me JavaScript. Yeah. Learn JavaScript like a pro. Okay, so what, cars.length. Okay, so let me rerun my code. See, layer. Okay. <laughs> So zero, one, two, three. Yeah, that's the index. Okay, so I want to get the contents. How do I get the contents? Because I need all of us to be in on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You put um cards. <laughs> After you after you you adapt the start, then square brackets. Wrap yeah. brackets. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Ah, uh, let's play again. Ah. So. <laughs> Okay, so actually, we actually got it. That's the content. That's the last item. So cars that lens. So cars that. Yeah. Yeah. So cars that lens. So we use this to get like the last index. So you know that this is zero index. So when I say. This, uh zero index it, it starts from zero it doesn't start from one so zero one two three so when you say the length the length is 
one, two, three, four. So you're saying cars dot lens, which gives you like this, which gives you four minus one. And then you know that for you to get an item here, you have to do like square brackets. You need to do the name of the variable and then the square brackets, and then you pass the yeah, what you want to do, cars dot lens minus this. So that works. Yes. <laughs> Okay, arrived late. Okay. So, so this works. This works. Now, what if I want to update? What if I want to change what is inside here? What if I want to change what is on the second index? How do I do that? Mm -hmm. Will help me out. I want to change BMW to something else. What do I do? Ah. Are we together? Okay, so I want to change, I want to change BMW, yes. <laughs> so I'll say cars and then I put index of two and I'll just say is equal to. Okay. So with this, I can still just do my CLG. And I just console log cars. <laughs> okay, so if I let me clear again. Okay, so it's now updated. I have Venza inside here, and everybody is cool. Everybody is fine. All right, all right. So so let's just, uh, so this is this is arrays. There are, there are a whole lot of things that we can actually do with arrays. <laughs> I don't know if I like Benz. <laughs> all right, all right. So these are very interesting things. And then these kind of form like the fundamentals of um. Yeah, they form the fundamentals of yeah, these are just your data, your <laughs> yeah, these are your data types. So over time, over time we'll actually get to deal with is there anyone I've not touched? Okay, you have undefined. So what is what is undefined? So more like when you do let's <laughs> okay so you have something like this you just have you just initiated the variable but you've not assigned anything to it so this is undefined so let me see clg ipo you. So get an undefined. So that's because you've just you've not assigned a value to it. So you have an undefined. So what if I do? No, it's an object. Okay, so interesting. So we have like very, very, we have different data types. And over time, we'll be using, we'll be working with them. So this was just meant to be a refresher for us. So uh, let me see. Hmm. 
let me see. So, for, uh, I think what was just left is just talk about functions and so on and so forth. So we'll talk about functions, we'll talk about operate. Well, we have different types of operators. I don't want this thing to drag like this. So we have uh, arithmetic operators, comparison. So let me just show this. So we have arithmetic operators. So these are the ones you use for your mathematics and so on and so forth. You have comparison where you have to do like, uh, you have to do and and or, you have comparison with not, not equals to rather. Yeah, not equals to, you have logical ones where you have to do and and yeah, greater than all the sense. So you also have assignments, assignment operators where you use equals to. So all of these have like a role to play. So you also have conditional statements where you use uh, if, else if, else statements, and so on and so forth. Then we have loops, different types of loop, for loop, while loop, do while for iterations, and then we have functions. So these are just these are just fundamentals of JavaScript. These are things that you guys you guys should already know. So uh, what is going to happen now is for well, you guys. Okay, I'm going to drop something on the channel afterwards, or yeah, you guys get your hands a bit dirty. So I'll drop something for you guys. So yeah, I'll drop something on the channel. So this was just a refresher. So by the time we come for next, the next class, we're going to go into React proper. And I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's just going to be a mini task. Just going to be a mini task. Maybe you might not. Well, I don't know yet. So I'll just drop something for you guys to do. Then when we come in the next class, we're going to look at the terminal. We're going to look at npm. We're going to look at because you're going to deal with packages. You're going to deal with a whole lot of setup, and we'll be using Vite or React. So. We're going to install React from the next class and run with that. So this was just an intro to usher us inside. When we are now settled down, then we start going into React proper. So I don't know if there are people with questions. Do you have questions so far? Yeah, I wanted us to be feel at home. Not immediately you come, you now start installing and doing this and doing that. We we'll even do some setups. Next class. So does anybody have a question? You can ask me now. We don't have questions. Yeah, Emmanuel. So regarding the mini task, are we going to be like pushing it to GitHub or is it just a link or something? Sorry? Like I said you regarding Did the uh, the mini the mini task that you're talking about, is it going to be like the last front end challenge task? Like are we pushing it to GitHub? And then like how many days is it going to take for us to like is it like we have to finish oh, for the next okay. class or no 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 well, well, it's not. It's not like uh, learn with nothing very serious. I know what I'll give you for React. 
<laughs> I know what I'll give you for your React class. <laughs> I mean, for your React task. So just feel at home for now. But just play with JavaScript for now. So maybe by the end of the week, yeah, something will happen. <laughs> So I, we need to set up React first. You're here for React. So the, whatever I'm giving you now, I've not done anything very React specific. When, when we do React, then eventually you do something, you do it as, but now it's just learn, learn with it, try it out. Let me see your submission. You push to GitHub normally. And then, yeah, another thing I think I need to address. I don't know why most okay. Yeah, we also need to learn. <laughs> we also need to learn how for those of us. Yeah, my reason for fact asking us to um use GitHub pages for, for most of us, for most of us probably we've not used them um, GitHub pages before to host our HTML sites, but it's something you just need to know how to do it. I think in the last code camp, they also had to set up React and host it on GitHub pages, which we might even do. Which we might even do. So it's not all Netlify and uh, what do they call it? No Netlify and uh, Vessel. So these things, they kind of help you. So whatever I'm giving you now, just, <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. It's something that you need to try out and see how it works. <laughs> uh, you can unmute and, and ask that question. Just say, <laughs> let, me, now, let me understand what you mean by that. which you can just omit and speak. Gochuku, we are waiting for you. <laughs> I've been trying okay. to like, I've been trying to want to like, sort out post the reality. Like, this experience has been back, I have worked like that. When you say hosting, hosting it, hosting it on GitHub pages or hosting it on Netlify or which one? I no one even use Netlify. I've used that stuff, but I still don't want to work there. So my the stubbornness was with GitHub pages because I feel more comfortable hosting on GitHub pages than on Netlify. Because when I was doing program 2.0, it was the easiest way to get to your um your distant life, your physical life. But yeah I've tried a lot of we even linking it on my um what's it called my package objection file then using my board. I'm still stuck. But hopefully you teach us please don't don't give us a sack. <laughs> please <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost. I'm very lost. Okay, okay, okay. No problem. No problem. Uh, we'll learn how to. We'll learn how to. We'll learn how to host it. I believe there are, there are people here that know how to even do it very well. But we'll learn how to host using Netlify. We'll learn how to host it using Vesa. We'll learn how to host it using GitHub pages. Well, you guys can sort that one for us now. Somebody can, well, someone can look it up. How do you host it? GitHub pages. But we'll learn how to do it. We'll learn how to do it. So uh, don't be scared. <laughs> it's something that we'll do together. <laughs> Manuel, they are putting you on the spotlight every time. So. All right, all right. So, do we have any other questions? We have ladies in this class. I'm not even hearing their voice. Have their voices. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Can I shoot you? Like, 
and react and regards to react what yeah. specific part of javascript apart from all like i need like more specific areas of javascript in particularly for um for react in regards to our next class basically so i just want to like okay. know where else uh, where Okay, but, okay. Now, we go do audio, it's just for one as they don't know if it's too much time. That's what I want. Okay, okay. So, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So, let me just add them. Let me just answer you based on that. Uh, so, when you're dealing with React, well, not doing the raw this thing like that. So probably things that you need to learn are like um, understand ternary operator. We're going to use that. Understand the structuring. We're also going to use that. Understand as again. Yeah, we we'll use on click, use state. Well, most some of them you're going to just you learn them because. They're kind of React specific and so on and so forth. But when it comes to the structuring, yeah, the structuring, um, writing maybe in line JavaScript, all those type of things. So you can actually, those are the areas, those are the specific, but just learn JavaScript, understand JavaScript. These ones will fall into place for you. You'll just understand. But these areas I just spelled for you, those are like things that you, play around because let's say for instance you want to pass props inside you might not want to use like um item dot the name you can just want to let let's say you want to do a person's name directly you can just go to using the name instead of doing item dot the name that's when you're looping over over things so there are just some specific this but we'll learn them over time as you apply them you get to understand them. You get to understand them. So I don't know if you're clear on that. Are you clear on that? Good. You go. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh <laughs> Okay, does any other person have a question? I don't know, there are ladies that are here. They've not said, they've not said anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, six principles, this stuff. You're going to be using arrow function, that's another thing. Your, what again? You just learn them over time. You're not going to use function, name of function, all those things. Yeah, there are better ways of doing that. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Madara, I've not heard your voice. We again. Hello, me. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Are you guys? Are we in tune? Are we? I know you guys have not been saying anything. Have you been following what we've been doing? Okay. okay. So I'm asking Omodar, I'm asking Kinenye, yes. I'm asking Pelumi. Um, have you guys been pulling up on what we've been doing? Okay, yeah. And no questions so far. Okay, we don't have questions so far. All right, all right. So I think in that regard, uh, so that's fine, that's fine. So. I'll just drop a mini tax for us and then we will head right to it. 
So uh, it's nice to actually um, meet you guys. And I believe that we'll do great stuff. I believe we will build great stuff. Please. For those people that know me very well, I don't like shabby design. So new style and be working on that one if you're not very good at it. So as much as possible. Yeah, we we'll just know that as you're doing fine designs, you're also learning to react and then you're growing. So this is, if we don't have any other question. I think this is the point where, yeah, where we will, <laughs> this is the point where we will call it a close. I believe we are all good. Let's switch screen here. All right, so thank you everyone for coming to class. Thank you, thank you. And uh, I'll see you guys on, I'll see you guys. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'll share this slide, I'll drop this slide. Yeah, I'll see you guys on Wednesday, same time, same station. And please, I need all of us to be more interactive then ask, ask questions. Ask questions. We have gurus in this class, so ask questions. I trust Austin, I'm a bad guy. Ask questions. I trust Emmanuel too. <laughs> uh, so thank you guys for coming to the class. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will be dropped on YouTube. Yeah, you're welcome. Even did you know you say anything? Well, I will not struggle with that. Over time, people will talk. <laughs> All right. All right, thank you so much. You guys have a nice day.